In Wales, a former lead mine reaching far into the granite mountains and forgotten for centuries has recently been rediscovered. Offering some of the most breathtaking landscapes in the UK, the Cambrian Mountains in Wales were formed over 540 million years ago. Within them are hidden treasures, if you know where to look. So there's much more to this valley than meets the eye on the surface. We've got a hidden world of underground levels, passages, tunnels. One of the recently excavated mines is known as the Kamistwith Mine. Known for its rich geologic diversity, its tunnels cover nearly three square miles. Mining expert Johan Lord is on a mission to explore this forgotten frontier. The walls of the mine's entryway, also referred to as an adit, are full of metal ore deposits that don't rust, such as lead, zinc, and copper. We are currently standing in one of the many cracks that go through the Earth's crust, known as faults. They serve as sort of escape routes for magma rising from the Earth's core. Millions of years ago through volcanoes, and the, this magma carrying all sorts of minerals condense and solidify within these cracks in the Earth. And as they cool down and solidify, they form metal ores within these cracks. And these are what are known as the loads, which the miners then follow. Miners have been following the veins here for thousands of years. We've got mining taking place in this valley from over 4,000 years ago, right up until the last 100 years. The mines were first exploited for the ore of copper, about 2,100 BC in the early Bronze Age. Moving on to the Roman occupation in the early AD centuries, uh, it was first mined for lead. Lead was the principal ore mined here from medieval times through the Industrial Revolution. And for a while, the market for lead was so strong that it was more expensive than silver. However, Mining expanded in other countries, and the demand for lead plummeted by the 1830s. Mine owners had to act fast to keep their expensive operations afloat, so they turned their attention from lead to zinc. In the early 20th century, you had zinc rising to be a very prominent factor as well. Zinc was predominantly used for brass making and coating metals such as iron and steel to prevent them from rusting. It was a matter of leave no stone unturned to find every ounce of it, because that deemed how much the miners were paid at the end of the day. And this was one of the last chances which the mine had in a desperate attempt in the early 20th century to encounter new reserves of ore. And the level actually ends right here, uh, with no mineralization at all. By the 1930s, there was no more mining, and the workings lay abandoned. They just gave up, they ran out of money, and this was the end of it. Today, only a few remnants of the mine's former glory remain. Still, mining enthusiasts like Yoen have been exploring the abandoned mine for decades, searching for new adits. And after years of searching, Yoen might have found one. My friends and I dug this out recently. It took us about three or four weeks to dig this particular adit open, pick and shovel work. The entrance to the adit had collapsed over the years. There was a weak timber braced entrance which had rotted away and the soil and everything else had fallen in and completely barred entry. So we had to dig down through that collapse in order to break through into the solid rock level, which we now have on the other side of that collapse. Once Yoan and his team cleared the entryway, it was easy to see that their hard work was well worth the effort. Judging by the items and the rewards that we found in here, it was unlikely that any other explorers had been in here. We have some really good footprints here, so we can actually see 
the heel prints on this side, the clem as it was called, and all of those individual hobnail marks. So even though it's in fresh looking mud, this mud has been completely undisturbed for at least 120 years when the last miners walked through this and left their mark. Quite remarkable. Once miners removed all the natural riches hidden within the walls, they would abandon their equipment, leaving behind artifacts that are just now being uncovered. This part of the mine closed about 140 years ago. Among the first things that we found was a tally stick, and there's a bunch of X's engraved with a knife onto the top of the stick, counting how many wheelbarrows of ore were taken out of the mine. These are the remains of some explosive boxes. There's actually a miner's boot print still on this plank of wood here. Today, navigating through these tunnels is a lot different than it was over a century ago. And what these abandoned artifacts tell us about the dangers of mining in these narrow tunnels is remarkable. The box was a dynamite container, two scrapers in the middle, and a charger. The scrapers were used to clean the dust out of that shot hole before the naked gunpowder was poured in using the charger. And the charger is a long metal spoon, essentially, in which the naked gunpowder was loaded, and it was placed into the back of the shot hole like that. They were later made out of copper or brass, but this one is iron, so this would actually produce sparks, which was yet another large danger to the people who were operating it. Despite the dangers, mining in 19th century Wales was a lifeline for those prepared to endure the horrors of this subterranean world. There's a very eerie feeling about the artifacts. Deep inside the Cambrian Mountains in central Wales, hidden for over 100 years, lie the secrets of the last miners to work these dark subterranean tunnels. Life underground was harsh, and the miners had little in the way of protection. On their heads was a felt tull, or hat. This is original to Commissioner's Mine. And the candle would have been placed, and we can still see a little black smudge there, where it would have been, on a ball of clay on the front of the tull. Conditions deep in these adits have helped to preserve the wood. This area of the mine is actually held up by uh, some more timbers up there with several tens of tons of deads or waste rocks stacked up on top of them. But what we have the nicest uh, artifact here is this ladder, which would have once been common throughout this mine. Now surviving sections in such good condition as this are quite rare. This ladder is about 150 feet long joined together in various places and about 120 years old. And it would have enabled the miners to walk in the main adit, where I'm standing, and to climb up three or four levels. Navigating these abandoned tunnels today is a lot different than it was over a century ago. It was difficult even when the mine was operational. Miners had to come up with ingenious solutions to transport the heavy ores out of the tunnels. This was to some extent the nucleus of the mine during its later period. In about 1900, this skipway was built, which is basically an inclined railway going down to the lower levels that served as a main elevator, bringing ore from the bottom levels up to here and also down from higher up to here as well where the ore would be loaded into the wagons to be pushed out to the surface. It was actually worked by a compressed air winch sighted at the top. Recently, Johan made another monumental discovery. We are approaching the most productive area of the Comestwith mines, which are the workings on the main vein that was called the Comet Load. And it's up behind this big pack wall here. This pack wall retains a huge amount of waste material that was gained from those workings and platforms extending up about five, 600 feet. The wooden hopper here was built into the pack wall with a sliding door behind these two uh, hinges so that material could be thrown down, piled up behind the door. The door was then opened to direct the material into wagons sitting here. And then all that material then was trammed out over the bridge behind me. 
sheer size of the comet load is hard to fathom. This is one of the largest excavations on the comet load. When the entire width of the vein is extracted, the chamber that's left behind by all of that material, all of that rock being taken out is called a stope. And it, this one in particular extends up for about 200, 300 feet in height. And the timbers, so you can see timbers right up there high above us. Above those timbers, that's merely a working platform. And above that is another five to 600 feet of workings going right up to the top of the mountain. To see workings on this scale is quite spectacular. Of course, the miners would never have seen all of this in its entirety. They would have seen one or two little candle lights like twinkling stars high above them. They wouldn't have had an idea of the scale or the shape of this cavern in its entirety. Through exploration, Johan is determined to delve into the past of the miners and preserve their memory. There is no one comprehensive map, <laughs> there probably never will be, of the 20, maybe even 30 miles of workings in here. There's a huge amount still to explore and still to survey and build up sort of an idea of what we've got going on in here and hopefully improve our mapping over the years as we continue to explore. There's still hundreds of miles more of these mines across the region still waiting to be discovered. <laughs>